Hi there, what's your name? Hello, my name is ChatGPT. How can I assist you today? Can I call you Jimmy? Of course. You can call me whatever name you prefer. Just let me know how you'd like to address me, and I'll respond accordingly. Jimmy, what can you do to make my life easier developing a game with Unity Game Engine? In this video, I'm going to be exploring Chat GPT and see how it can help me with game development. If you have any suggestions of what I should try with Chat GPT, write that in the comments and I'll see if I can make another video on that. Some of the responses are going to be kind of long, so if you don't want to listen to the whole response, you can skip further into the video. But now let's see how Jimmy is going to respond to my question. As an AI language model, I can provide you with some tips and suggestions that may help make your game development process with Unity Game Engine easier. Here are some things you can try. Take advantage of the Unity Asset Store. The Unity Asset Store is a vast library of assets, tools, and plugins that you can use to enhance your game development experience. You can find pre-made game assets, scripts, and other tools that can save you a lot of time and effort. Use Unity's built-in tools. Unity has many built-in tools that can help you streamline your game development process. For example, the scene view can help you quickly set up and arrange your game scenes, and the animation window can help you create and manage animations for your game characters. Get familiar with scripting. Unity uses C-sharp as its scripting language, so if you're not already familiar with it, you may want to start learning it. C-sharp is a powerful language that can help you create complex game mechanics and interactions. Use version control. Version control is an essential tool for any game development project. It allows you to keep track of changes to your project and revert to previous versions if needed. Unity integrates well with popular version control tools like Git and SVN. Test and iterate. Game development is an iterative process, so don't be afraid to test your game often and make changes based on feedback. Unity has a built-in play mode that allows you to test your game in real time, making it easy to identify and fix issues as they arise. I hope these tips help make your game development experience with Unity Game Engine more enjoyable and efficient. Well, that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for more what capabilities ChatGPT has that can help me with game development. But let's try something else right now. Jimmy, can you give me some ideas for a game? Certainly. Here are some game ideas that you could consider. Puzzle game. Create a puzzle game that challenges players to solve increasingly complex puzzles. You can use Unity's built-in physics engine to create interesting mechanics and use procedural generation to create new puzzles on the fly. Platformer. Develop a platformer game where the player controls a character who must navigate a series of levels, avoiding obstacles and enemies along the way. You can add power-ups, hidden areas, and boss battles to make the game more engaging. Adventure game. Design an adventure game where the player takes on the role of a character who must explore a richly detailed world, solve puzzles, and interact with NPCs. You can create a branching narrative with multiple endings, adding replay value to the game. Racing game. Create a racing game where the player can customize their vehicle and compete in various races against AI opponents or other players. You can add different types of races, such as time trials or elimination races, and different types of vehicles, such as cars, motorcycles, or even spaceships. Survival game. Develop a survival game where the player is stranded in a hostile environment and must scavenge for resources, craft tools, and build shelter to survive. You can add different types of hazards, such as harsh weather conditions, dangerous wildlife, and other players who may be hostile. These are just a few ideas to get you started. Ultimately, the type of game you create will depend on your interests, skills, and the resources available to you. Jimmy, write me a story for a top-down tank game that I can use to create a game on. Certainly. Here's a story that you could use as inspiration for a top-down tank game. In a distant future, the world is engulfed in a global conflict. The two superpowers, the Alliance and the Coalition, are locked in a bitter struggle for control of the world's resources. As the war rages on, both sides develop new weapons and technologies to gain the upper hand. The player takes on the role of a tank commander for the Alliance. As the war intensifies, the player is sent on a series of missions to disrupt the Coalition's supply lines, destroy their weapon factories, and neutralize their bases. Along the way, the player encounters a variety of enemy tanks, each with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. As the player progresses through the game, they unlock new tanks, weapons, and upgrades that can be used to customize their vehicle. They also learn more about the history of the war and the motivations of the two sides. As the conflict reaches its climax, the player is tasked with leading a daring assault on the Coalition's main base. The mission is fraught with danger, and the player must use all of their skills and resources to succeed. If they can destroy the Coalition's headquarters, they will bring an end to the war and secure victory for the Alliance. So, that's the story. You can use it as a basis for your tank game, adding your own twists and turns to make it your own. Good luck with your game development. It's not bad. Let's try out regenerating and see what we're going to get. Sure, here's a possible story that you can use as a basis for your top-down tank game. It's the year 2050, and the world has been plunged into chaos after a devastating war. The remaining nations have formed alliances and are battling for control over the world's remaining resources. 
As a tank commander, you lead a small but elite team of soldiers who have been tasked with carrying out a series of missions that could turn the tide of the war in your alliance's favor. Your first mission takes you deep into enemy territory, where you must sneak past enemy patrols and destroy a heavily fortified enemy base. The enemy has placed numerous obstacles in your path, including minefields, turrets, and tanks. As you make your way through the enemy territory, you discover a sinister plot by the enemy to unleash a deadly weapon that could wipe out your alliance's forces. It's up to you to stop the enemy's plan and save your team and your alliance from certain doom. In subsequent missions, you must lead your team through a series of increasingly difficult challenges, including rescuing hostages, destroying enemy supply lines, and infiltrating enemy bases to gather intelligence. As the war rages on, you must use all of your tactical skills and strategic planning to outmaneuver the enemy and emerge victorious. Only by working together and using all of your resources can you hope to win the war and bring peace back to the world. With your tank at the ready, you set out on your mission, knowing that the fate of the world rests on your shoulders. Good luck, Commander. So you can definitely get some ideas for a game and even get an outline of a story. Of course, you can expand, add more details, and it can help you with that. But right now, let's try some technical questions and see if we get some good response for that. Jimmy, can you write me a movement script for a top-down tank? Sure. Here's an example movement script for a top-down tank game in Unity. So it's pretty interesting that it, it went ahead and used the Unity game engine because I've mentioned it before in the conversation. In this script, we first define two public variables, speed and rotate speed. These variables control the movement and rotation speed of the tank and can be adjusted in the inspector panel of the Unity editor. In the start method, we get the rigidbody 2D component of the tank object using the get component method. In the update method, we first get input from the horizontal and vertical axis using the input.getAxis method. We then rotate the tank based on the horizontal input using the transform.rotate method. Finally, we move the tank based on the vertical input by setting the velocity property of the rigidbody 2D component to transform.up, which is a vector pointing in the direction of the tank's forward-facing direction, multiplied by the vertical input and the speed. Note that this is just an example script and may need to be modified or expanded upon to fit your specific game's needs. It generated this example code for us and also gives us instructions of how to set it up. So I went ahead and did that. And here is the result. The movement works pretty good. I just had to configure the speed of rotation based on my scale of the game. And everything is working like it's supposed to. Now let's go tell Jimmy to modify the script. Jimmy, can you use the new input system? Sure. Here's an updated version of the movement script using the new input system package in Unity. And now the code is modified with the new input system. I tested it out with the setup as well, and it works perfectly. So the capability of writing scripts is actually pretty good. You get the code and you get description about the code, but let's try another script out. Jimmy, can you get me a script for the camera to follow the tank? Sure. Here's an example script for a camera to follow a tank in a top-down game. And I followed the instructions for uh, this script as well. Add it to the camera, selected the tank as the target, and it's working like it's supposed to. Now let's see if we can get more in-depth instruction how to set up a certain mechanic in Unity. Jimmy, how can I add a cannon to my tank? To add a cannon to your tank, you can create a new game object as a child of the tank object and position it at the location where you want the cannon to be. Next, you can create a new script for the cannon that handles its movement and firing. Here's an example script that you can use as a starting point. Now I got a very short instruction how to set it up and then an example code, but I went ahead and asked for more in-depth instruction. And here is the result for that. There's lots more that I wanted to try out in this video, but I'll make a separate video for that. This video is already 15 minutes long. I'll try to make it shorter to show you the experience that I went through. If you have any ideas of what I should try, be sure to write that in the comments. Click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.